Goedemorgen Marcel, ja dat klopt inderdaad. Een hele bijzondere gelegenheid is het hier. Een uh, uniek bezoek van de kalif in Hunspeet van de Ahmadiyya moslimgemeenschap. We gaan met hem in gesprek over uh, een aantal activiteiten waarvoor hij uitgenodigd hier is in Nederland. <coughs> Mea C. Hazour, good morning. Good morning. It's an honor meeting you. Thank you very much. Um, your visit to the Netherlands is for a main reason. Would you mind telling us um, what for your, had your invitation? I had an invitation from uh, the Foreign Affairs Committee of Netherlands Parliament that I should come there and say a few words to them, a sort of uh, discussion and reception. So one of the main reasons was this. Apart from that, we have to lay the foundation stone of our mosque in El Mere. So this is the second program which is going to be held uh, next day. So apart from that, I do visit my community members to see them, to meet them, to see their problems. So I will have a busy schedule here. Yes, you have a very busy week. You're staying in Nunspeet the entire week? Hopefully, yes. Okay, you like it here? Yeah, it's a very good place. Very pleasant and scenic. You enjoy here. Whenever I come here, I enjoy the life here in Nunspeet. Your main residence is London? Yes, of course. Why London? You see, in 1984, a law was enacted against the Ahmadi community in Pakistan. Till then, the successor of the Ahmadi community, the Khalifa, used to live there in Rabwa, Pakistan. So because of the law, wherein it, de it uh, declares that no Ahmadi can practice, preach, or profess his or her religion. So because of that, the duties of the Khalifas are such that he cannot live there with these conditions. So my predecessor had to migrate from Pakistan to London in 1984 because of that law. It was enacted by the Pakistani parliament. So since then, the headquarters is there in London. And uh, after his demise, when I was elected as Khalifa, about them, the, the MDA community. So I am also living there. You have a lot of responsibilities being a Khalifa. Would you mind sharing uh, the res responsibilities to us? What does it all mean? You see, the Khalifa means the successor. And the responsibility of the Khalifa is normally in Islamic terminology is after the demise of the Prophet. We believe that there was a prophecy of the Holy Prophet of Islam upon him that in the latter days a reformer will come who will be called as the Messiah and Mahdi of the Holy Prophet of Islam um, and the peace be upon him then we believe according to the signs given by the holy prophet of islam peace be upon him that prophecy has been fulfilled and there was a claim of a person who said that i am the Mahdi and the promised messiah who was foretold by the prophet of islam and uh, we believe that that person, with the name of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian, is that person because the prophecies foretold by the Holy Prophet had been fulfilled. And there were so many prophecies, and one heavenly sign was the eclipse of sun and moon. There was a claim of this person that I am that person who was foretold by the Prophet of Islam. And 
up till that time among the Muslims it was a common um, um, uh, thinking that whenever the person will appear the, this heavenly sign will appear will occur so that sign occurred in the Eastern Hemisphere in 1884 in the month of Ramadan in Western Hemisphere in 1895 and not only that the eclipse of moon and sun will occur but specifically some dates were foretold that on the first day of the occurrence of eclipse of moon the, the this will happen and on the second day on the occurrence of sun this will happen and it happened so this was a very big sign for us so we believe that that sign has been fulfilled and there are so many other signs of course have been fulfilled so this is the person but other muslims say no it is not despite the fact that before that they used to say this this is the very big sign if it happens we shall believe anyway in short so, because we believe that that person has appeared in the person of Mirza Ghulam of Qadiyan, there was too much hue and cry among the Muslims. So, in Pakistan, all the Muslim sects got together and declared us non-Muslims or not Muslims. So, and after in 1974, during the Bhutto regime. Then in 18, uh, 1984, in the Al-Haq regime, it was again strengthened and reinforced by saying that you cannot preach, practice, or even you cannot name yourself as your, you can name your child, you cannot name your child as a Muslim name. So there were so many restrictions. So he had to migrate and then uh, as I have said, I am also living here and the responsibility you were asking of is that to continue that work which was the work of the Prophet and that was to spread the true message of Islam because it was foretold by the Holy Prophet that the true message if time will come in the latter days when Muslims will forget the true teaching of Islam. And that is what we have been saying today. And this person will revive the true teaching of Islam. And uh, so he did. And after his demise, this is the responsibility of the Khilafat. First, to spread the true message of Islam. Then, those who accept his message, keep them intact with this message so that they do not go astray and that is what you will see among most of the Ahmadis that we try to abide by the true teaching of Islam secondly then there's a lot of uh, other humanitarian work so apart from this missionary work spreading the message of Islam their humanitarian work we have been doing for instance, uh, running our schools and hospitals and other projects in, in uh, deprived uh, nations of the world, such as Africa and other. So, apart from that, my responsibility is also to see and meet and guide my people on a day-to-day basis. They come to me, they write to me, and it's a huge work. They ask for help? Did they ask for help when they write to you? They ask for prayers. They ask sometimes they ask for help. For instance, if a person who is in uh, who is a, uh, you know a talented person and uh, because of the limited resources he cannot continue his studies, so he will ask for uh, help. Even he will ask for the guidance. Even that these are the preferences in my educational field which them should I uh, select then if I select this one 
then this much money is involved in it and I don't have that then we do give them some stipend some scholarship and so on. okay main reason um, you believe in peace loyalty you want to bring that to um, all countries actually that's a main message for you is it hard nowadays to bring peace to people to explain uh, what you're here for yes of course it is hard but uh, if we are determined that we have to spread this message all across the world and we, we should not give up then despite the fact that it is hard we have to do it is it accepted by most people even it is you cannot say it is you see if it is a good thing it is accepted by most people your question should be that is it accepted by most people and do they follow your teaching then yes even though they accept it but they do not follow it because of their you know so many hindrances and restrictions and so many other things involved in in their you know uh, personal uh, uh, affairs do people understand your customs or do you have to explain it over and over again do people accept the fact that you have your own religion your own acceptations we Ahmadis have own religion we don't have our own we believe in the same Islam as was revealed to the Prophet of Islam peace be upon him we believe in the same Quran that holy book which was revealed on the Holy Prophet to the Holy Prophet so we don't have anything extra about only the interpretation for instance we believe that according to the Holy Quran to do jihad is a good thing but what type of jihad the, 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 the best type of jihad is to reform your inner self first then to spread the message of love and peace and harmony this type of jihad which is considered jihad in the present days jihad of sword and gun and uh, you know sort of um, uh, extremism is not a jihad this is the last type of jihad if with the condition that if Muslims are attacked as a Muslim and they are stopped to practice their religion and even if you don't have any chance you don't have any other alternative to avoid this then of course you have to retaliate in the same manner you see for 10 years the Holy Prophet of Islam lived in Mecca and he all you know had to go through all type of brutalities he never retaliated and ultimately he was migrated to Medina and there in their in Medina the infidels of Mecca attacked him with a huge force had Allah the Almighty not helped them they would not have survived but Allah helped the Holy Prophet and his companions and they fought back without any you know worldly means you and the it is a verse in the Holy Quran that you are permitted now to retaliate to defend yourself and the beauty of the this uh, permission is that when it says that you can retaliate now you can defend yourself it says that if Muslims were not allowed to defend themselves or to curb this uh, the the, the uh, persecution or attacks and uh, brutalities of uh, non-Muslims or infidels then you would not see any church any synagogue any temple or any place of worship 
intact because these people who are not only against Muslims, they are against Christians, they are against Jews, they are against other religions. So if you want to save the, the freedom of religion, if you want to save the religion, if you want to establish the freedom of religion, then you have to defend it. This was the reason. Not that you only to defend yourself, to defend Islam, or defend your mosque. The permission was granted with the condition that if you defend yourself, you will have to defend all the religions. And this is why we believe in all the religions. We think that all the religions are true in their origin. Is this something you are going to tell members of parliament in your visit tomorrow? Pardon? Is this something you are going to tell the members well, of parliament? I'm just going to tell them that uh, Islam is not the religion of extremism. And <clears throat> it is a blame on the face of Islam that it permits you to do sort of jihad which is which only means killing of everyone it's not and the thing is that we should try to stop this thing by you know joining our hands working together we can work together so that we can create peace and love and harmony in this world Besides your visit uh, to members of parliament, you're going to be meeting several families back here. Um, do you know what their intention is? Do they need help from you? No, sometimes they only come to see me. They just, you know, this, you see, you know, this uh, two-way love of the, the, an, an Ahmadi member and the Khalifa. So, as you you become happy when you see your loved ones. This is what the reaction should be. You probably heard of the refugees who are in Ninspaten um, as well. Are you planning on visiting them as well? Refugees from where? From Syria? Anyway, I didn't know that there are some refugees here in Ninspaten. But uh, you say, I, that, this I know that uh, an influx of uh, uh, refugees here in the, in Europe and um, they are trying to go to um, the UK as well through the tunnel and there's a lot of um, problem and disturbance there. Anyway, they are Muslims and some of them are not. And we only say that whoever is deprived and being denied of his right should be given opportunity to live a free life. Either it's your open government who are ready to help them or any other government, at least they should be helped. In what way can you help them? You see, the best way is to, st to stop uh, brutalities uh, happening there in their own countries. You see, by extremists or the, by, the, by the governments even. And secondly, if they have migrated and they are true immigrants, refugees, then they should be given some opportunity to settle down for the time being. And after that, when the conditions come to normal, they are in their own country, then they should be sent back and uh, be helped there to, to establish themselves again. Thank you very much you. for doing this interview. And hopefully you'll have a pleasant stay here in Unspeet and in the Netherlands. Thank you very much. And we might meet again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Tot zover hier het interview met Dakalif hier in de Ahmadiyya Moslimgemeenschap. We gaan terug naar de studio.